Hi, welcome to Engineering Physicists. So today we start a new series on Newtonian mechanics, which we will extend up till the modern classical mechanics. So for a basic background and for the sake of factual knowledge, we'll go a little into its founders. Well, the concept of motion is a basic part of our everyday life. We, the common people, are too accustomed to bother about motion. But philosophers like Aristotle, Galileo and Newton were desperate in understanding the underlying principles of motion. Now, let's first define what we mean by motion. In physics, motion is the phenomena in which an object changes its position over time. When there is absence of motion, we say an object is stationary, motionless, immobile, or invariant with time. But with what respect are we stating these facts? Normally, a statement about motion is given by an observer with respect to himself. This frame with respect to which the statements of motion are made are called reference frames. Thus, motion has an intrinsic relative nature. This relative nature was first recognized by Galileo and was known as Galilean theory of relativity. This was later modified by Einstein in his special theory of relativity. Before constructing the laws of motion, it is wiser to look into the requirements of motion. Well, it is easy. We need a space where everything takes place and an omnipresent flow of time that allows us to detect change. As physicists, we must be very strict with definitions of space and time. Here we'll talk about Newtonian space-time which is quite different from its actual nature, later described by Einstein in his general theory. In the Newtonian era, space-time were absolute in nature and independent of the events that took place in it. That means that a ball moving in space won't affect either space or time. This is quite natural, isn't it? But the fact is that the world isn't that simple. And as per Einstein's general theory of relativity, space-time has a more dynamic character. Well, we won't go into those complexities and remain in Newtonian boundaries. Now, a space is defined as what remains when everything of this universe is removed, all of mass and energy. Time, on the other hand, is defined by change. Time interval is measured by continuous repetitive motions, clocks, the oscillatory pendulum, the revolving planets are means of measurement of time. Space is measured using a ruler. Two points in space are defined to be at a given distance or length from each other and can be measured by ruler. Now, after understanding the prerequisites of motion, we can define motion as a change in space associated with a time interval. The rate of motion is called velocity and is defined as the rate of change of displacement with time. Displacement is the shortest distance between two points and is directed from initial to final position. Thus is a vector quantity which makes velocity a vector too. A scalar version of the above is distance, defined as a path traversed by an object. The rate of change of distance with time is called speed. We can see that the two variables space and time decide the type of motion, that is circular, elliptical, etc. Thus, we use the mathematical construct of coordinates to define and understand motion. I